Peace to your tribe. I trust that you're all doing okay, family. Um, this is your apostle, Apostle Bungan Blacksmith. I promised you a video um, a couple of days ago, maybe it's what, uh, three days, four days ago, um, about how, what, how to tell the difference between the voice of your own heart and the voice of the Lord. So I'm going to start that teaching uh, today. So I believe it's going to be maybe a two-part, three-part series. Um, because before I talk about how the voice of the Lord sounds like, I want to talk about how the voice of God does not sound like. Okay, so this in this particular video, I'm going to be looking at uh, how the voice of God doesn't sound like, right? Because if you can know how the voice of God does not sound like, also it's going to push you closer to, um, yeah, it's going to push you a couple of steps closer to being able to know how the voice of the Lord sounds like. So this is very important teaching that i want you to pay heed to um i have my bible in front of me um i want us to go to the book of facts uh kings uh chapter 19 we are going to be reading from verse 9 we are talking about how the voice of the lord does not sound like okay verse 9 and he came at he came here unto a cave and lodged there and behold the word of the lord came unto him and he said unto him what uh what doest thou here elijah we remember the story of elijah the mount camel showdown when he confronted the false prophets of baal and he, and he slaughtered a lot of them after the event and then jezebel threatened put a tread on his head a price on his head and the man ran for his life we know the story he comes to the cave and then as he came to the cave the bible says he spent a night there at the cave and the Bible says behold the word of the Lord came to him and essentially that's what we are talking about we're talking about the word of the Lord the voice of God uh, so the Bible says and the word of the Lord came to him and he said unto him uh, <clears throat> this is God speaking to the prophet what doest thou hear Elijah and he said I've been very um, jealous for the Lord a God of hosts for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophet uh, with the sword i even i only am left and seek thy face um to take it away and god said uh, and god and 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 he said go forth and stand upon the mount before the lord so the lord is saying to the prophet get out of the cave right stand um upon the mount before the lord and behold the lord passed by all right God is telling the prophet, go outside of your cave and, the, and stand on, on top of the mountain. When the prophet goes out, outside of the cave and he stands on the, on, upon the mountain, the Lord passes before the prophet. Right? And then, uh, um, <clears throat> and behold, the Lord passed by and a great and a strong wind, wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. So when the Lord was passing, there was a strong wind that shook the mountain and that broke rocks. Rocks. Now, the, uh, now the first thing that I want you to, 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 about the voice of God, how, how it does not sound like I want you to get, is that um, the voice of the Lord is not in the wind. The voice of the Lord does not sound like the wind. Uh, and wait, let me finish reading the rest of the verse. Uh, it says, but the Lord was not in the wind, right? So strong wind, break, shaking mountains, breaking rocks, rocks into, pay, into, piece, into pieces. And the Bible says the Lord was not in the wind. One of the problem with the, with the emerging prophets, those and believers who are trying to learn to hear the voice of the Lord, they think the voice of God is in the wind. 
But the, the Bible says the Lord is not in the wind. And the wind, um, the wind speaks of mystery. We know Jesus said to Nicodemus, the, you, you can see the, you can, you can hear the sound of the wind. You can see the effects of the wind. Yet you don't know where the wind is coming from and you don't know where the wind is going. So that is to say the wind is mysterious. So a lot of people, they, they think the voice of God is mysterious. And I blame a lot of prophets and prophetic teachers who came before us, who, who made it a point that they mystify the prophetic. They mystify it. There is, um, and I spoke about this before, that there is this thing that um, prophets and spiritual leaders love to make themselves like some type of special people, like specially born type of people, specially graced type of people. And of course, when their followers believed that the prophet is specially born, was specially born, he's specially graced, then people begin to find the person mysterious. They find the voice of God mysterious. So people disqualify themselves from entering the prophetic because their birth was not accompanied maybe by supernatural signs. So a lot of people, this is why people find it an odd, a weird idea that the prophetic can be taught in spite of there were never mind there were there were there were um schools of the prophets in the bible people still think it's weird to have a school the school of the prophets yet in the bible in the bible there are schools of the prophets why because it's a misconception that the voice of god is supposed to be difficult the voice of god uh, you know you're supposed to have a special grace you're supposed to have a special anointing maybe you're supposed to go on fasting a hundred days come back and then you can start and i taught you this one of the things I have always taught being consistent in teaching in my prophetic schools is that the reason why you hear the voice of God is the main reason, the primary reason why you hear the voice of God is because you were created to hear God. Just as in the natural you are created to hear, in the spirit you, you are created to hear. So your spirit, man, can hear. This is why even being born again, it's not... Um, a requirement before someone can hear the voice of God. And I, and I showed to you also in some of my teachings that Old, Old Testament people who were not part of the covenants of Israel had God. God, for example, gave Pharaoh a dream and Pharaoh was not uh, part of the covenants of Israel. He worshipped the, the gods of Egypt. Uh, God gave kingdoms to Nebuchadnezzar, uh, hence the Lord humbled him and he gave, spoke to him. He gave him dreams and all of that. So the men was not hearing the Lord because he was right with him. That's why I also told you that as much as holiness is important, it's not a requirement for you to hear the voice of God. So you can hear the voice of God because you are created to hear the voice of God. So it's, 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 it has nothing to do with a special anointing. It has nothing to do with special grace. It has nothing to do with when you were born, uh, before you were born, an angel came and said to your mom, this child is going to be a prophet. Or when you were born, there was a light all over your head. I, I know people love these stories because, you know, and some prophets love telling these stories because it makes them to appear so special. I started hearing the voice of God at the age of four years. And then the, the rest of the believers discredit themselves. They talk themselves out of the voice of God because after all, I'm not that special that I'm, I can hear God like that prophet. It's a lie. Let's remove the mystery from the voice of God. Right? Cats can hear the voice of God. Dogs can hear the voice of God. Cows can hear the voice of God. Eagles can hear the voice of God. All created things can hear. Frogs can hear the voice of God. Trees can hear the voice of God. The wind can hear the voice of God. The waters can hear the voice of God. Every created thing, it has an inherent ability to hear and respond to the voice of God. There is no mystery. So stop looking. It's like um, <laughs> it's like in the markets, uh, the stock market, or the or this. Let me just say the market. A lot of people fail in the markets because they always they are always looking for that holy holy grail trading strategy. Like uh, they think there is a secret strategy that you know traders that trade for banks they use. If I can get that strategy, and a lot of public strategies that you will find even on the internet they are working. But then the person would not know the, the rules of the strategy, would not stick to the rules of the, of the strategy. And then the person will lose money using a strategy that can make the person the man. Then they keep on looking for a strategy and in the process they are busy losing money. 
the same thing you discredit the voice of god you disregard the voice of god because you somehow believe that prophet prophet you are following he knows something that you don't know you know there's something yeah there's a secret to the voice of god you so you are busy following that prophet that with the hope that one day the prophet maybe might reveal the secret and you can become like the prophet while the truth is that even that prophet himself the reason why he is hearing the voice of god is because all mankind they were created with the ability to hear and respond to the voice of god okay it's not a christian thing it's not a holiness thing it's a human thing papa god when he created mankind as his creation he made sure that they have the ability to hear him when he when he speaks to them so that's why then i always say is in the prophetic is not the matter of learning how to hear god but it's learning how to recognize when god speaks because god is already speaking to you you just have a hard time struggle recognizing when god speaks speaking to you so the first thing you must take away from your prophetic journey right this is a mentorship i'm offering you this is like free mentorship i'm offering you to grow in your prophetic gifting the first thing i want you to do is stop quitting stop mystifying and stop looking for mysteries when it comes to the prophetic to the voice of god stop it it's always gonna <clears throat> and here's the thing the people you follow they know that you you think there's some mystery some secret thing and you follow them because of that so they keep on playing you making you believe that there's just something there's just something i need to find there's just something but you remain a follower the rest of your life and 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 guess what <laughs> so if you watch some of those prophets um they are closest their immediate family their wives sometimes their kids you find that you've been following your prophet before his 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 baby was born his baby's born his baby grows up his baby learns to prophesy and you still can't prophesy but you've been following the prophet before even his child was born what why is that it's because there are things that they would tell close people that are close to them that they would not tell the public you see so having a mentor the having a mentor is having someone who can speak plainly with you who can like remove the fog like the 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 the, myst- the mystery and say here is how this thing works okay and then you can take it there <clears throat> and you yourself you have to deliver yourself from looking for wind the bible says the lot was not in the wind all right <laughs> then i know of course there are some classified ways how god would speak in a way that it would require special grace for you to be able to interpret i'm not talking about that i'm talking about your your con- the conversations the dialogues between you and the lord the lord wants to speak to your heart the lord wants to speak to your spirit and you must be able to hear and recognize that okay so uh the lord was not in the wind and and then the bible says and then an earthquake but the lord was not in the earthquake an earthquake is a physical manifestation uh, so some people they look for manifestations right some people don't think then for example god is present if they are not shaking they are not vibrating people are not falling if they are not crying <clears throat> they are se- <laughs> and and here's the thing there are manifestations the lord does does give manifestations but that doesn't necessarily mean every time god speaks there's going to be a manifestation right for for you to know that god speaking to you you don't have to your your ears don't have to start burning <laughs> right you don't have to have an emotional response and starting starting to act all emotional remember back in the day when people who did, were not trained in the ways of the lord when they felt the lord was speaking to them they would start behaving like manifesting uh behaving as if they are feeling pain or they are overwhelmed and 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 and, and, and you know ah oh, the lord then the lord says ah, just wait You're too emotional it's not the lord now your emotions can respond to what god is saying and doing in your spirit but it's not really necessary okay so 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 that's why uh with ogutsungulu i nearly spoke i nearly spoke zulu oh god <laughs> um uh, sometimes i forget that our inter- our audience is our community is international we have people from america um south asia we have people from U- uk europe we have sure we have people even paris we have people around the world so sometimes i forget and i want to speak zulu 
<laughs> it's a local language here in South Africa. Um, so you don't have to be dramatic. You don't have to be dramatic to show that God is speaking through you. Okay. You know those people when we are in the service, they start now like uh, wanting to, you know, and, and I'm not against manifestations, right? I'm not saying they are no manifestations, physical manifestations, like people falling under power, people shaking, people crying. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you don't need any physical and emotional reactions for, for you to know that God is speaking to you. <laughs> you get it? I hope you get that because it's important to get it. So and the last thing uh, after the earthquake, uh, I want to finish my video is becoming too long. Um, uh, where, 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 where was I? Um, uh, okay, I was here. So the Lord, the Bible says, um, and after that, the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. So the Lord is not also in the earthquake. So stop looking for physical manifestations and emotional manifestations. You know, people, I don't know. Somehow we think if God is moving, if God is speaking, there has to be some kind of emotional reaction. There has to be some kind of physical manifestation. Then the Lord is there. Nah. That's why some people end up crying when, when they want God to speak to them. When they want God to move on them, they start crying. It, it, it ends up becoming an emotional movement rather than, rather than a spiritual movement. People end up to getting too much in the flesh just to show that God is speaking to, through me or the Lord is doing something in me. And, I, and not everyone in the... Not everyone uh, who has manifestations, they're actually trying to show other believers that God is using them or God's moving in them. Some people are just too sensitive, right? And that's why the fact that you don't fall, it doesn't mean you're less spiritual, actually. And, you know, the fact that you don't cry with you worship, it doesn't mean the other people feel God more than you. You're probably not that emotional, Esther. <laughs> right? So we have to be able to separate spiritual things, emotional things, and physical things. They're not really the same thing. And oftentimes, it happens that when God is moving in the spirit, you will see the effects on the flesh or on the soul. But it's not, a, it's not a necessity. You don't need that to know that God is actually doing something. Okay? Um, okay, the last one is... Uh, the last one is... Um, and after, and after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, right? Uh, 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 the fire speaks of judgment. The Isaiah speak, the Lord through his eye spoke about the spirit of burning, which, which is judgment. A lot of people, prophetic people again, when they prophesy, they think uh, to show that God is really speaking to them, they have to be judgmental. You know, prophets like that, always when you're prophesying, you are critical. And a lot of these people have a fault-finding spirit. A lot of these people have a critical spirit. They have an ugly spirit. They are just, just judgmental people. And I know that a lot of you are trying to pattern your prophetic ministry uh, after Elijah. But Elijah is a bad model for you as a New Testament prophet. Because Elijah was prophesying people who Jesus had not died for. You as a New Testament prophet, your prophetic ministry is not the same. As the ones of, 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 the, of the old. Because Jesus has already died for the people. And at this point Jesus is not judging the world. Jesus is saving the world. So the New Testament prophet. His ministry must advance the finished works of the cross of Christ. So we are calling men to repentance. And not through judgment. The Bible says Romans 12. The, the goodness of the Lord leads to repentance. So uh, the fivefold ministry is sent out to tell people of the finished works of Jesus. Not to judge. Right, And I'm not saying God cannot speak a corrective word, but I'm saying a lot of emerging prophets, they have a critical spirit. They, because they study these Old Testament prophets, they think that's how a prophet is supposed to sound like. Just, I call them prophets of doom. They're just releasing judgment and breathing fire. One time Jesus was rejected in Samaria and his disciples said, Lord, should we call fire on them like, like Elijah? And Jesus rebuked them. He said, you don't know what, of what kind of spirit you are of. Can you imagine? Jesus is rejected by the Samaritans and the disciples are offended that how can they, re they reject Christ? They say to the Lord, should we call fire on them? Jesus says, you don't know the spirit is, that is using you now. 
why you didn't choose us? Says, yeah, how dare they reject me? I'm Christ. And he releases, says, yeah, release fire like Elijah. So even Jesus didn't approve of Elijah's act of releasing fire. Because when his disciples said, we want to do it like Elijah and release fire, he says, you don't know you're of white spirit. <laughs> so you see, so, the, so, so also, as God is rising you in the prophetic, you don't have to be judgmental. The Bible says, he that prophesied speaketh unto men for edification, for comfort, and for consolation, or exhortation, that is to say, stimulating them. So as, 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 as a prophetic voice as you are rising, become a blessing to someone, right? Release words of um, edify someone, encourage someone, exhort someone. Especially as you are beginning in the prophetic, avoid trying to play Elijah, trying to go around finding out what's wrong with people releasing judgments and stuff, right? There's a place for that anyway, but it's for the macho, people who, who already know the difference and who are already balanced, okay? So I, I'm, I'm done. Um, uh, my video is already way, way too, too long now. It's like 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to be releasing a video a day. So I, there's no need for me to release long videos because I will, you, will, you will end up suffering from information overload. So I'll be giving to you um, precept upon precept, line upon line, here little and there little. So if you have not subscribed, this is the good time for you to, to subscribe um, to my channel. And make sure your notification bell is turned on so that you don't miss any teachings. Okay, so I'll be releasing videos from today. I don't know for how long, but for a season, I'll be releasing videos daily for mentorship purposes. I got a lot of you asking me on my Facebook uh, to, to mentor you in the prophetic. So, and I know I have a school, uh, Allied School of Seers, but it's not for everyone. But uh, if you can prove your commitment and your dedication and your seriousness to me through the classes that I'm doing right now here on YouTube, I will... I will, I will handpick, I will prophetically choose among among some of you to, to come and join us on the Allied School of the Prophets. But this is the public platform for everyone. It's impossible for me to mentor every, to mentor uh, you individually at this point. Um, our Facebook community has like 50, 58,000 people already. So uh, people in hundreds, they are texting me asking for mentorship. So this is why this platform is so important because on this platform, I can make a video and I can talk to all of you. And also through the Light School of Seers, if you privilege to become part of that school, you can get to be on Zoom with me. Okay, so, um, so, so yeah, make sure you are subscribed and you follow through because I actually don't take this platform lightly and, and taking the Light School of Seers more seriously because of the private school. Right, so this platform is very important to me. Hence, I'm sitting here and I'm making a video to help you develop, to mentor you, to shape you, to polish you in the prophetic, and to help you put handles on your gift. Okay, so I'm going to be seeing you tomorrow on the video um, um, tomorrow. Okay, so thank you so much for tuning in, and I'm signing out.